close your eyes. Watch your breath as it comes in, watch your breath as it goes out. And stay with the breath each time it comes in, each time it goes out, all the way in, all the way out. And try to make the breath comfortable. Ask yourself what kind of breathing would feel good for the body right now. If you're feeling tired, breathe in a way that's more energizing. If you're feeling nervous or tense, breathe in a way that's more relaxing. Try to find a point of just right inside. This is a good lesson. You find that you can find a kind of happiness that is really st re fairly steady and doesn't have to depend on harming anybody at all. This fits in with the Buddha's instructions to have goodwill for everybody. Wishing for their happiness, wishing for your happiness. We look for happiness in a way that will last, but at the same time doesn't harm anybody. So that's goodwill for ourselves and goodwill for, goodwill for others. Because you think of all the different ways people look for happiness in the world that are so destructive. They destroy themselves, they destroy the people around them, and yet they keep doing it. As the Buddha said, we're a slave to craving. We keep coming back, and even though the things we do are destructive, we keep doing them again and again and again. He says it doesn't have to be that way. We have a choice. We can decide that we're going to look for happiness in a way that doesn't harm anybody, and it's going to be a happiness at last. This is why we develop qualities of generosity, virtue. This is why we meditate. Because in each case, we benefit and the people around us benefit too. This is the season where everybody's talking about goodwill. Well, the Buddha says have goodwill all year round. In fact, one of the meditation topics is goodwill. You can think, may I be happy, may all living beings be happy. Now think about what it means. The simple fact that you're looking for happiness or wishing for happiness doesn't mean that it's going to happen. You have to act on the causes. And that's the same for other people around you, too. If they're going to be happy, they have to act on the causes. So what you're wishing is that may other people, as well as you, understand the causes for true happiness and be willing and able to act on them. That's a wish you can have for everybody, even people you don't like. You can say, well, even though I don't like them, may they come to their senses and learn how to find happiness in generosity and virtue and meditation as well. And the same thing you can do to help them in that direction, you're happy to do it. But at the same time, you have to realize there are a lot of people out there who are not going to act that way, and for that you have to have equanimity, realizing that each of us has his or her own actions. And you can't force people to become skillful, you can't force people to become wise. It's a choice that each of us has to make for him or herself. The question, of course, is are you going to choose to become wise? That's the important question. So it starts with having goodwill for yourself, in the sense of not doing anything that's going to be harmful in the short run or short term or in the long term. So you look inside, and this is one of the reasons why we meditate, is to give the mind a sense of well-being here so that we're not quite so hungry for things outside. Because that's one of the reasons why we do it. Things are unskillful. We forget that happiness can be found inside. We look for pleasure in things outside. And sometimes it involves saying things and doing things that are going to be harmful. But it's out of that sense of hunger that drives us. So when you feed the mind well inside with a sense of well-being through the meditation, you're not quite so hungry, you're not quite so likely to do things that you're later going to regret. So the Buddha is teaching us an important treasure here. In other words, teaching us that we can prevent ourselves from doing unskillful things, because once they're done, they're done. You can't go back and undo the unskillful things you did in the past. I've heard of many cases where people did things and they later regretted them, and they say, if I had a million dollars, I'd go back and if I could change what I did, I'd pay that million dollars. But you can't even do that. A million dollars or billion dollars can't do that. What you can do is develop the presence of mind and also the inner strength that comes from meditation to realize, okay, there are things that you're going to choose to do, and you want to make sure you choose them well, and you don't want to regret them later. This way you give a huge gift to yourself. It's worth more than a million dollars. And you give a large gift to others as well. These are the best gifts, the gifts that come from skillful thoughts, skillful words, skillful deeds. Much more important than material things. Material things get broken, material things get outgrown. But skillfulness inside never gets broken, never gets outgrown. And skillfulness in your actions never gets broken. So make sure you develop that as your gift to yourself and your gift to others, not only now in this season, but all, all year round. This is going to give good benefits all year round if you follow through.